Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start, at the very least, on what promises to be a pretty epic review of House Carino by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is one of the Prelude to June books. It's the third in a trilogy, the third that uh, Brian and uh, Kevin worked on together. Um, I've enjoyed this series so far. In fact, I think I've reviewed both of the other books. Um, so let's just jump on in and see what I made of this one. Um, I'm going to read the blurb, then I'm going to check out all of my tabs, there are a lot of them, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end, so... Dane reads... Prelude to June now reaches its magnificent conclusion. The war which will decide the fate of three great dynasties has begun. From the royal planet Kaitan, the Padishah Emperor Shaddam IV strikes without mercy at planets which defy his edicts. He believes that soon he will have absolute power thanks to a substitute for spice which he alone will control. On June, Liet Kynes leads the newly confident Fremen as they strike crippling blows against the planet's Harkon and overlords. From his exile on Caladan, Prince Romber Vernius is ready at last to liberate his unhappy planet Ix from the tyranny of the Tlexo Masters. But the final war, the one which will change the future of worlds, must be between two men. Leto Atreides of Caladan and Vladimir Harkonnen of Gady Prime. So, very first tab, we, uh, oh, I tabbed out the acknowledgements, so let's see what I tabbed out there. Ah, yeah, so I liked this little line in the acknowledgements here, which tells you a lot about how this sort of project came about as well. As always, Catherine Sider at Wordfiring worked tirelessly to transcribe dozens of micro cassettes and type many hundreds of pages to keep up with our manic work pace. Her assistance in all steps of this project has helped to keep us sane, and she even fools other people into thinking we're organised. Yeah, writers are never organised. Don't believe in the hype. We have some maps. This is a map of Arrakis, North and South Polar regions. So I always find it interesting to see the ways that uh, the Fremen try and like safeguard water and stop water from being race, uh, wasted to the point at which to, to Fremen, spitting on the floor in front of somebody is a sign of great respect because you're basically saying I would sacrifice my, you know, life's waters for you. So um, this is sort of less, less glamorous than spitting on the floor. Stilgar and two Fremen darted into a side tunnel and drew their milky Chris knives. Mauler pistols would be far too noisy in these enclosed spaces. When a pair of Harkonnen guards blundered past them, reeking of spice spear, Stilgar and his comrade Turok leaped out and grabbed them from behind. Before the hapless men could cry out, the Fremen slit their throats, then slapped sponge pads over the wounds to absorb the precious blood. And later on in that, um this scene we get. Without a word he drew his Chris knife and slit the man up the middle from pubic bone to sternum. The captain gasped in disbelief as his blood and entrails spilled out into the sun. Waste of moisture, Torok muttered beside him. And so we catch up with Shaddam and it says each cup that he used was destroyed after he drank from it so that no one else could have the privilege of using the same china. This emperor's really up his own arse but I mean most emperors are I suppose. Power corrupts. And um, this just shows you the kind of man that Leto Atreides was. Um, so it says he sat in one of his mother's embroidered cushion chairs where she used to curl up and read daily devotions from the Orange Catholic Bible. But he thrust the chair away, selecting instead a taller wooden one. These were not comfortable times. And again, going back to the Fremen, this, this little line here, just underscores the importance of water to the Fremen. Each moment of life was as precious as water itself and he would not waste it. And a cracking little line here as well. Uh, when a mime speaks, does he impart wisdom or reveal his folly? So um, Jessica, who is Paul Atreides' mother, uh, the concubine of Leto Atreides, each of the chapters in this book, as in all the Dune books, um, start with little quotes. So this is a quote from Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohaim. She said, what can I say about Jessica? Given the opportunity, she would attempt voice on God. So the voice is um, one of the Bene Gesserit sort of powers, I guess. It's a bit like using a Jedi mind trick. You will hit the like button on this video. Another great quote at the start of one of the chapters from the Bene Gesserit Azhar book. One cannot hide from history or from human nature. And this line here is great as well. I think it applies to our own world. Um, Nothing is impossible, director. Halloran Run countered, his voice stern. The first step in innovation is to know that a thing can be created. After that, the rest is a matter of detail. Elon Musk would be like, yeah, yeah, that's about right. Um, so the Harkonnens are planning a banquet and um, they've got this guy in to help with etiquette. He doesn't last very long, as you would expect with the Harkonnens. This guy says, uh, we will select only the very, very best wines. Not from Caledon, Rabin interjected, and the Baron agreed. Crew pressed his lips together for just a moment. 
the second best wines then. So Caladan is uh, the homeworld of the Atreides and obviously they're enemies to the Harkonnen. Another cracking line here. There is no man so blind as one who has made up his mind. Leah catches up with this guy called Rondo Tuek who uh, betrayed him basically. And I just want to read you this whole little section here. It's pretty, it's pretty bleak. As a practical matter, Stilgar symbolically cut out Tuek's tongue so his screams were reduced to gurgling sounds because of the blood pooling in his mouth. As the man retched and spat gouts of scarlet, Leah pronounced the Fremen sentence upon him. Rondo Tuek, we take your tongue for the treachery you have spoken. With the tip of his Chris knife, Leah gouged out the man's eyes, one at a time, and placed the staring white orbs on a bedstand. We take your eyes for witnessing things you should not have seen. Tuek writhed and struggled in horror and agony, trying to scream, but he only succeeded in spitting more blood. Two of the Fremen commandos frowned at the wasted moisture. With the edge of the blade, Leah first carved off the treacherous man's left ear, then his right, placing the flaps of skin beside the tongue and eyeballs on the bedside table. We take your ears for listening to secrets not meant for you. All the commandos participated in the final step, chopping off two ex-hands with a hollow sound of cracking bones. We take your hands with which you collected bribes, selling out a man who trusted you. At last they released the merchant to flop and bleed on his bed. Alive, but perhaps better off dead. Hmm, yeah, I don't, I don't know which I would prefer. Don't mess with the Fremen. They'll fuck you up, mate. They'll fuck you up. And uh, this bit here, I just like because this is basically inspired by the Tower of London uh, in the UK, in, Lon in London, obviously. Set atop high poles flanking the gate with the heads of four executed prisoners, three men and a woman. Their skulls, still draped in bloody flesh and then coated with a preservation polymer, had been hollowed out and fitted with glow globes, so that an unsettling ghoulish light shone through the eye sockets, mouths and nostrils. Traitor's gate, the boatman announced, as the metal doors creaked open and the small boat hummed through. A lot of famous prisoners enter this way, but not many come back out. And then here we have a quote from Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. Revenge! Has language ever created a more delicious word? I repeat it to myself when I go to sleep at night, confident it will give me pleasant dreams. I mean, that tells you a lot about the guy, right? And then uh, this is from the Bene Gesserit View states. Politics is the art of appearing candid and completely open while concealing as much as possible. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's what our politicians do, isn't it? And this is interesting because, again, it, it's kind of philosophy. Uh, so this is from the private journals of Kwisatz Mother Anirul Sado Tonkin. We could be dreaming all the time, but we do not perceive those dreams while we are awake because consciousness, like the sun obscuring stars during the day, is much too brilliant to allow the unconscious content so much definition. You could be dreaming right now. You're dreaming that you're watching this review. A Bene Gesserit saying this about diplomats could be politicians. Diplomats are chosen for their ability to lie. The Fremen go out on an attack and it says, uh, Stilgar's raiders jumped off their boards and fanned out to secure the big carry all. Around them, the mutilated soldiers screamed and moaned, thrashing their cauterized stumps. Because of Fremen marksmanship, all of the men still had their vital organs in their lives. Now, granted, maybe not for long, because the plan is basically to take them back to camp and, you know, drain, uh, drain their blood and turn it back into water. Another quote that could be about our real world politics from states, the Bene Gesserit view, all states are an abstraction. It is astonishing how foolish humans can be in groups, especially when they follow their leaders without question. Great line from Reverend Mother Moheim, she goes, all men behave strangely, that has long been known. This is a quote by Abu Hamid al-Ghazali from Incoherence of the Philosophers, an ignorant friend is worse than a learned foe. And a quote here from Emperor Fondil III, the hunter, the conquerors despise the conquered for allowing themselves to be beaten. Kind of see that in like the history of the British Empire in a way. Uh, another quote here, this is from Lady Aniral Carino from her personal journal. So this is the Emperor's uh, wife, who uh, is also a Bene Gesserit. The universe is always one step beyond logic. Piece of Fremen wisdom. The man who sees an opportunity and does nothing is asleep with his eyes open. And um, Romba later on. Romba, by the way, is a great character. Um, he's mostly machine by this point due to an incident that happened at the end of the last book. Um, but he's basically, he's trying to retake X because it's the, his planet, but it's been captured by the Telexo, or however you pronounce it. And um, he's got like Leto on side, but he can't get, get any information to him. And um, Gurney Halleck says, uh, still Duke Leto is operating in a blackout of information. I wish we'd had a way of contacting him to tell him that we're going ahead. And Rombo quotes the Orange Catholic Bible. If you have no faith in your friends, then you have no true friends. 
a quote here from Aristotle of Old Earth. He said, It is not always the same thing to be a good man and a good citizen. And some Fremen wisdom deep from the desert. A man cannot drink from a mirage, but he can drown in it. And Padishah Emperor Idris I, Idris Elba, from the Lanzarote Archives, he said, The natural, pa the natural destiny of power is fragmentation. Lady Anna Rule Carino, a journal entry, Brutality breeds brutality, love breeds love. Unfortunately, she lived in a household that bred brutality and so bad things happened to her. Crown Prince Raphael Carino, he said, Inevitably, the aristocrat resists his final duty, which is to step aside and vanish into history. Yeah, people don't like vanishing into history. And um, then we get the naming ceremony for young Paul Atreides, who becomes Muad'Dib. And I just thought this was, uh, this was nice. This is Leto. He goes, uh, Taking his son in his strong hands, Duke Leto lifted the baby high. Citizens of Caladan, meet your next ruler, Paul Orestes Atreides. The name had been chosen to honour Leto's father, Paulus, while the middle name, Orestes, commemorated the son of Agamemnon in the house of Atreus, thought to be the forerunner of House Atreides. Jessica looked at him with love and acceptance, smiling at her son and glad he was safe. And finally, this is the first law of Mentat, but I just thought this was interesting because I've been doing a lot of writing for clients on the subject of processes. A process cannot be understood by stopping it. Understanding must move with the flow of the process, must join it and flow with it. So yeah, Prelude to June, House Carino by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. You do get a sense throughout this that everything's just kind of wrapping up. It's tying up the loose ends from the first two books. But that's natural, I mean, it's the last book in a, in a trilogy, so it kind of has to do that. And it does a good job of it. There's some really interesting stuff here, in particular about Gurney Halleck, uh, about what's his name, um, Liat, Liet, uh, of the Fremen, the planetologist. And um, yeah, again, if you're into the original Dune books, these books are just really worth reading because they give you a lot of background into kind of the setup and the political landscape in which the Dune series actually happened. Obviously they're all based on Frank Herbert's own notes as well, so that makes it cool. Um, but I saw, and I can't remember who, but somebody did a review on Booktube where they were talking about these books and saying that Kevin J. Anderson is much more of like an adventure story writer. And that really does come across, like the, the storyline is much more action packed, lots of stuff happening. Um, so it's kind of, I mean, it's still got the philosophy of the original Dune series, but kind of with a lot more action, um, which I think made it more readable. So I gave this a strong, no, I'm gonna give it a weak four out of five. Um, it was a good book. Would recommend the uh, Prelude to June trilogy. So there we have it, that's what I made of House Carino by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. As always, don't forget to let me know what you thought of this book in the comments. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.